Hello and welcome to this uh, presentation on rabbit viral hemorrhagic disease, a bit of an update um, by myself, Richard Saunders, for Rabbit Awareness Week. So, um, out there obviously we've got quite a lot of threats to our, our rabbits, our, uh, uh, our domestic pet rabbits, and we've got the potential for spread of disease and catching disease from all sorts of uh, sources. And this is why this year we're strongly recommending, as, as every year, but the, uh, the focus this year is on ensuring that our rabbits are protected by various biosecurity methods and um, vaccination obviously being the cornerstone of prevention of uh, viral, untreatable viral diseases. So we're aiming to prevent our rabbits from bringing in and catching and uh, otherwise acquiring disease problems. So there's two uh, main viral diseases that we need to worry about and of one of those diseases, VHD, RHD, VRHD, RVHD, whatever you want to call it, there are two forms. But mixed mitosis is the simple one that we're probably well aware of. If you've seen a rabbit with mixed mitosis, you're unlikely to forget it. These rabbits develop absolutely classic clinical signs, lumpy, swollen areas around the, the eyelids, the nose, the, uh, the mouth, around the ears tend to be quite thickened, uh, and around the genital area, there tends to be uh, quite thick swellings. Now I'm going to show some quite unpleasant pictures in this um, uh, this presentation. Uh, I'll warn you when we get to the uh, the nasty VHD pictures, um, but I suspect that if you've seen wild rabbits, you've seen mixed mitosis in these, these animals. And these rabbits can um, scurry around for you know, perhaps um, several days or even a week or so uh, with these sorts of signs before eventually succumbing to predators. They're, they're less able to, um, to keep a lookout for and escape from predators or they, um, they run across the road under a car because they can't see where they're going. So this is a long, slow, drawn out, painful death for these rabbits. And uh, obviously, ideally, we want to prevent this from occurring in uh, uh, certainly our domestic pet rabbits. There is a vaccine against this. There is only one vaccine that covers um, this, uh, this combination of diseases, myxomatosis and RHD1, the older form of rabbit viral hemorrhagic disease. And um, this is a good vaccine. It's uh, been available for several years. It's a recombinant DNA vaccine. Uh, it can't cause the disease. Um, uh, but what it doesn't do is include RHD2, which, uh, which emerged onto the scene after this, this vaccine was made. So rabbits must be vaccinated against um, myxomatosis and um, if your rabbit isn't vaccinated already you should be contacting your vet to arrange that. Um, it is possible to, uh, to help prevent myxomatosis coming into the, uh, the household but those are additional steps you should take, they aren't to replace vaccination. Vaccination is not effective in 100% of cases, there are going to be some rabbits who are immune suppressed or otherwise don't respond to the vaccine, uh, so these things are a bit of a belt and braces approach to trying to minimise the risk of them coming into contact with the virus, but the key thing is, is always vaccination. The things that we can do to prevent the spread of uh, mixy, to prevent our rabbits getting myxomatosis, are to not let them into contact with uh, wild rabbits. So if you have your rabbits free range in the garden, making sure that uh, wild rabbits can't poke their noses up against the, uh, the fence or the hedge from the outside and come pretty much nose to nose and potentially uh, spread it directly from rabbit to rabbit. The other main um, uh, method of spread is biting insects, biting flying or hopping insects. So we're worried about fleas. Uh, rabbit fleas live on rabbits and they could be con uh, transmitted the same way by fairly close contact. Rabbit, wild rabbits come into contact with the domestic rabbits or via an intermediate um, uh, animal such as a cat. So it's not uncommon for cats to go out and hunt uh, in the spring and the summer and come back with uh, either live or dead baby rabbits, particularly baby rabbits, um, who are easier to catch and tend to be absolutely hooching with rabbit fleas. They may then bring that into the house where you've got indoor rabbits and potentially spread myxomatosis that way. The other thing they may do is go out and in the process of hunting rabbits, catch wild rabbit fleas themselves. And so you'll see on your cat um, uh, a number of, a uh, small number of fleas, very often you know, two, three fleas, but you there can be more and they're typically ranged around the edges of the ears on the really fine skin on the edges of the ears and they're a bit longer and thinner than uh, and bigger than your standard cat and dog flea and they're called stick type fleas they look like a little sort of sticky burr um, a little bit longer 
uh, body sticking away from the uh, the edge of the ear and those can be removed um, by application of in local insecticide products designed for, for cats or should be taken care of as part of the uh, the typical kind of flea control that you use on your cats. Um, so we can prevent insects and fleas and midges and mosquitoes and what have you getting into contact with our rabbits uh, uh, without the benefit of a cat uh, carrying them by putting fly screens on windows in the summer if you've got indoor rabbits to prevent uh, those insects flying in or uh, surrounding covering your hutch, your shed, your rabbit run etc with those sorts of things. The danger is though that if you're providing these sorts of uh, things, if you're blocking airflow and uh, fresh air and sunlight getting into the environment, then you're keeping your rabbits cooped up in the summer in a hot, stuffy, dark environment, which is not particularly conducive to um, respiratory tract health and other uh, can potentially cause other health issues. So fly screens like mosquito netting can be a, a useful way of excluding biting insects and keeping uh, the disease from getting into contact with the rabbit, but may end up with your, your rabbit succumbing to other disease problems instead. Insecticides might be appropriate either applied to the rabbit, so there are various spot-on and spray products which are safe for rabbits, so ensure that uh, you know, it clearly states that it's safe for rabbits on the, uh, on the uh, packaging. Make sure you don't use these on other species. Make sure you don't use them on cats because cats are very susceptible to some uh, uh, insecticides that rabbits are um, uh, relatively uh, resistant to uh, the side effects of. Think about in your garden area, kind of minimising the risk of uh, large populations of uh, biting insects uh, having a chance to breed. So covering water butts um, <coughs> with uh, something impenetrable, putting something on the surface of the water uh, level on the water butt. If you've got a, a pond, a stagnant pond, a pool or, or whatever, thinking about uh, controlling the biting insects that uh, larvate in those uh, those ponds, draining them, applying biological control methods such as Bacillus thuringiensis or um, uh, a thin layer of vegetable oil just to uh, to apply to the top to form a watertight, airtight seal to uh, suffocate mosquito larvae. Um, the following photo is um, unsettling. If you've um, uh, perhaps had a rabbit die of VHD, uh, you might want to uh, close your eyes until I tell you it's okay to open them. And um, what we've got here is a, a rabbit who has uh, died acutely from viral hemorrhagic disease. And one of the sign signs that we see is bleeding from the nose, the mouth, uh, the vagina, the um, uh, prepuce or the anus, so any of the kind of um, orifices of the rabbits, they can uh, bleed quite appreciably out a uh, quite significant amount. When you open these rabbits up uh, post-mortem, they're, they're very often full of blood. The, um, the abdominal cavity and sometimes the chest cavity are full of blood from bleeding, internal bleeding as a result of VHD infection, which is how it, uh, uh, it causes death. Sometimes death is so quick that it occurs before blood actually is visible on the outside of the rabbit. They may still have bled internally, but none of it's made its way out. And that can often be mistaken for other things, from electrocution to foreign body obstructions in the, uh, in the intestine and so on. So there are other things that can mimic that. Uh, and that's why a post-mortem is, is a good idea. Um, uh, asking your vet to carry out a post-mortem for local disease awareness uh, and uh, to enable them to give the best advice to other owners within the area, as well as hopefully giving you some, uh, some closure and peace of mind as to what's happened to your rabbit. So VHD 1 and 2 can cause these signs. VHD 1 um, tended to kill all the rabbits it came into contact with, except those under about 10, 12 weeks of age. VHD 2, on the other hand, um, tends to kill a proportion of all rabbits of whatever age, but a lower proportion, and anywhere around sort of a quarter to a half the rabbits infected die from it. But it's a more effective, um, well-adapted virus to its host. So, it, um, <clears throat> so VHD 2 is looking to take over from VHD1 if it hasn't already, and we're starting to see less and less VHD1 and more and more VHD2. So it's vitally important that we give um, VHD2 vaccines as well as the myxomatosis RHD vaccine, the Nobivac myxo RHD vaccine, which doesn't have VHD2 present uh, in it. So our take at um, uh, Rabbit Awareness, uh, with Rabbit Awareness Week, with the Rabbit uh, Welfare Association Fund and with all our partners is to vaccinate all rabbits that we um, 
that we want to be protected against these viruses. Um, it uh, whilst there are two different makes of vaccine, are um, uh, which are effective against VHD2. We don't uh, recommend one over the other. We advise uh, vaccination in conjunction with a conversation with your vets about uh, which is the most in, uh, appropriate vaccine, but making sure that we vaccinate against RHD2 with a, a standalone vaccine and myxomatosis RHD1 with the uh, uh, existing uh, um, vaccine that's been around for several years now. In very, very rare cases, it may be appropriate to vaccinate with both of those products on the same day, um, on the same visit. Generally speaking, we like to put about two weeks between uh, those two injections because these vaccines haven't been tested for use together and they're not licensed for use together. And it's possible that we may uh, end up with uh, either lack of efficacy, lack of, lack of um, uh, protection if they're given together in some rabbits or potentially uh, harm to those rabbits if they're given together. And whilst that's extremely unlikely, the work hasn't been done to, to check whether that's a possibility. So uh, at the moment, our, our standard advice is to put two weeks between those vaccines. There are some cases where rabbits are particularly upset by being vaccinated and they go home and they don't uh, eat and they don't get back to you know, their normal kind of um, everyday eating and drinking and so on uh, for a few days. And in some of those cases, it might be appropriate to vaccinate them on the same day. But that will be off license and you should certainly take your, your vet's advice on whether that's better than, uh, than just coming back in on a, a separate occasion. And it doesn't mean they have to be vaccinated on day one and then 14 days later. They could be vaccinated on day one and then six months later, as long as we've got protection from the previ a previous vaccine uh, in your rabbit. They don't need to be vaccinated in close succession. You could stagger these vaccines so they're given throughout the year. And that has the advantage that your, your rabbit uh, gets a, a twice yearly health check, which potentially could um, uh, could be good at spotting other things, picking up other problems. Vaccination is the cornerstone of prevention against these infectious diseases, but um, biosecurity is also important. We talked about biosecurity and um, insect control for myxomatosis. VHD is spread in different ways. It doesn't tend to go via insects. It tends to hang around on clothing, uh, our feet, uh, dogs and cats feet uh, and so on. It tends to be trodden into the uh, uh, the environment by, uh, uh, by uh, us and animals. So we must think about stepping through a foot dip when we come back in, especially if we've got uh, a large number of rabbits and we can't change our external footwear for whatever reason. The simplest answer is to is to, to go out for your walks in one set of uh, uh, footwear and change into something when you come back into the house and interact with your own rabbits. If you bring new rabbits into the uh, environment, you should uh, undergo a period of uh, quarantine. VHD1 was extremely uh, rapid in the time from infection to death uh, being measurable in, in no more than sort of three, four days. VHD2 is a little bit longer, uh, but we would certainly expect to see clinical signs develop. And so uh, a two week quarantine period would be absolutely sufficient for both that and for myxomatosis. And you might consider testing, but um, testing, to be honest, is probably going to only give you a result after you've noticed the, the disease causing a problem uh, anyway. So quarantine is probably a better alternative. Treatment, unfortunately, is um, almost non-existent for these two diseases. Um, myxomatosis can sometimes, with its, least, with its less... Um, uh, uh, less pathogenic forms, especially if the rabbit's been vaccinated and has pr some protection. Uh, even if they get it, they tend to get a less pathogenic form, a less um, serious form. Some rabbits may have a degree of natural immunity and may be um, able to, to survive. But generally speaking, full-blown myxomatosis affecting the eyes, the mouth, the nose, etc. Is, uh, is, is near 100% fatal. And it's certainly a, 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 a horrific death that I wouldn't suggest that people attempt to get their rabbit through. Uh, I've seen too many cases where that's been unsuccessful and the welfare of the animal has been uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's suffered as a result so I wouldn't recommend that VHD uh, VHD2 a proportion of animals survive so I think it is worth um, considering supportive care uh, but just making sure that we don't spread that disease to other rabbits in the meantime um, so VHD isn't spread by biting insects quite so much. It tends to be spread, um, if at all, it tends to be spread more by direct contact between rabbits, um, contamination of food, water bowls, uh, water bottles, etc. spread from sneezing and um, other secretions and so on. But also it can be spread 
uh, from a disease and it's objects that tend to spread it so our feet uh, animals feet and um, it spread to this country from uh, China and from um, uh, Europe uh, with the two different forms, probably on, on car wheels, lorry wheels, shipping containers, etc. And birds can, um, can spread it by eating a dead rabbit and um, uh, flying on and then regurgitating the, um, the indigestible components of that, uh, that rabbit, the fur, and the, feather, uh, the fur and the bone and so on, uh, which is rich with the, uh, the virus and spread it that way. Even if you're not aware of virus in your area, please, please, please vaccinate. Please start vaccination. You don't want your rabbits to be the first one of the first cases seen. Um, vets may not be advising vaccination in some areas because they're not aware of it being a local threat. But it's, it's not a threat until it's a threat. And by that time, it can be too late and it can be spread so quickly and easily uh, that uh, any rabbit in the UK is, is really potentially at risk. Um, there is this slightly worrying suggestion that the virus can hang around for months, you know, up to about eight months or so in the in the wild. I think this is really kind of under optimum laboratory conditions, but certainly in the cool weather on organic materials such as a dead rabbit, um, we are talking potentially weeks, if not months, uh, for it to hang around. So um, going through any area which has got wild rabbits in, you're potentially likely to, to bring it back on your feet. So as I say, disinfectant of foot dips or <clears throat> simply have outdoor and uh, indoor um, or outdoor and in your garden wellingtons or, or other footwear to uh, prevent spread thank you for listening and um, uh, keep your rabbits safe this year